Hello everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a very important and very serious condition called cancer of the esophagus or esophageal cancer. As you know that esophagus is the food pipe which carries food from our mouth to the stomach. So the commonest symptom that a patient will present to the doctor um, is the following symptoms that I've shown over here. The most important symptom, and in my previous videos, I spoke about this as well, that if somebody's food is getting stuck in the back of the chest, <clears throat> especially after eating uh, bread, white meat, um, and different types of food, one should never take it lightly. No matter what age, sex we are, wherever we are living, we must see our doctor, so doctor can refer us for more tests. So that is the very common symptom. The second symptom is the patient starts developing a bit of heartburn, which is burning sensation behind the breastbone in our chest. They start getting indigestion, which is burning sensation in the upper part of our tummy. Um, some patients also complain of pain behind the breastbone when they are swallowing food. So food goes down, but when it goes down, the chest hurts and the food seems to get stuck. Um, some patients, obviously, because it hurts when they're swallowing, they don't want to eat anymore and they lose their appetite. They don't like the sight of food. They don't like the taste of food and they start losing weight. Now, thing to know about esophageal cancer, why I said it's a serious condition, that symptoms from esophageal cancer don't always present very early. So by the time the patient start getting these symptoms, many of us ignore these symptoms and disease gets worse and worse and worse and the cancer gets more advanced because we ignore the symptoms and sit on them for a long time. So next thing we are going to talk about is what age does esophageal cancer affect? I have divided people uh, into three different age groups, uh, people in their 20s and 30s, people in their 40s and people in their 50s and over. Over the years, um, not sure how many patients with esophageal cancer I might have seen. However, I've never seen anyone in the 20s and 30s who will develop um, esophageal cancer. Um, in my experience, I haven't. Maybe there are doctors out there who might have seen, uh, but I don't think there will be many patients in the 20s and 30s um, developing esophageal cancer. I've seen a few patients in their mid to early 40s or maybe late 40s, but again, not too many. Um, I've seen many patients over the age of 50. So 50 onwards, and as we grow older, the risk of esophageal cancer becomes more frequent. Next thing to know is what increases the risk of esophageal cancer. So if we reduce or control these problems, then perhaps the risk of esophageal cancer will get reduced as well. Now, there are many risk factors, uh, excessive alcohol, not eating healthy, etc., etc., etc. But in my view, the, these two risks are the most important ones. One is smoking. Smoking for a long period of time, smoking very heavily will increase the risk of esophageal cancer. And also, acid reflux. Now, in my previous videos, we talked about acid reflux and during acid reflux, I also spoke about a condition called Barrett's esophagus. Now, if you have not seen that video, then please watch it. It will give you more information about Barrett's esophagus. This increases the risk of esophageal cancer. Okay, now next step is how is esophageal cancer diagnosed, which means how is it picked up? So, Say for example, if I am getting food getting stuck in my food pipe and I swallow, it hurts behind my breastbone, I go to my own doctor, doctor refers me to the hospital because doctor is worried about my symptoms, wants to know more what is causing my symptoms. Then when I refer to the hospital, there are two ways of diagnosing esophageal cancer, two main ways of diagnosing it. One is a camera which is an endoscope, which again I've spoken in my previous videos and I'm going to talk a bit more detail in the next few videos, is uh, endoscopy, which is a camera which is put through our mouth or through our nose into the bottom end of the gullet uh, or uh, and also our stomach. And that will 
show that there is presence of something nasty in our esophagus or in my esophagus and at the same time biopsies can be taken which are little samples that can be taken with little uh, instruments that go through the camera and those samples are looked under the microscope and the diagnosis of esophageal cancer will be diagnosed or will be confirmed. The other way of doing it is a barium x-ray because lots of patients, they don't like a camera down their throat, they gag a lot or they've got a very strong gag reflex and they can't cope with the camera or maybe certain parts of the world endoscopy is not available freely. So barium x-ray is an alternative. Barium x-ray is in which uh, the patient is given a dye. It's like a drink, uh, a chalky drink. The patient swallows the drink and many x-rays are taken of the chest and the tummy to see how the dye is going down. And if the dye is going down the gullet, so for example, if this is the gullet or food pipe, that is the stomach and if this is the gullet that is our stomach um, and when the dye comes down somebody swallowed the dye there is a blockage over here from cancer dye comes down and it can't go down easily and the x-ray doctor can see this blockage on the x-ray and will confirm that there is a very strong possibility of this person having esophageal cancer. Now, once the esophageal cancer has been diagnosed, the next thing doctors do is try and find whether this is early cancer or it is advanced cancer or um, too far gone cancer. The reason for trying to diagnose whether it is early cancer because there is a good possibility of giving patient cure after treatment and if it is god forbid is a very late cancer then in many of those patients possibility of cure is not uh, not possible now how do we find out it's uh, early cancer or late cancer is by staging of the cancer now this is not just for esophageal cancer it is for every type of cancer in the body like stomach cancer, cancer of the intestine, cancer of the skin, cancer of the brain, uh, cancer of the lungs, the cancer has to be staged. Now staging means to divide it into either early cancer or find out whether it is late cancer. So to decide what sort of treatment is feasible for this patient to control their symptoms and to make them better. So what tests are used to stage esophageal cancer? Now these tests I've written are few over there, there may be a few more uh, and in some parts of the world there will be few less. Um, these are the commonest used tests um, in the West, however depending on the facilities available in the country, um, which part of the world we are in, different tests can be used uh, or some of these tests can be used rather than all of them. Not every patient requires all these tests, but many of them will require a few of these. So the first is a CT scan, which is computerized tomography, which is uh, the patient is put through a polomin tube, um, lying down, they go through this uh, tube with a sort of a circle, they go through it and the, uh, the circle will put some x-rays into the patient and the computer makes a, a picture of the, of the cancer and shows how early, how advanced the cancer is. When I say early or advanced cancer, um, as we all know, the cancer spreads and the cancer can spread uh, by a few different means. One, is the spread of the cancer is locally. So if the cancer is in the gullet, say, say for example, if this is the gullet, it's a little hose, piece of hose pipe, and the cancer is inside the gullet, so cancer is in there, but the cancer spreads outside, so cancer becomes like this. So if you take the gullet out, the cancer will look like this. So it's not just inside the gullet, but it's growing outside as well. So with a camera test inside, you can't see what's happening on the outside because the camera is in the gullet. So to look at outside the gullet, these um, the scans are done, a CT scan, is a very good way of looking at what's happening outside the gullet. Now, around the gullet, there are also little 
lumps called lymph glands. They are present throughout our body, in our neck, in our chest, in our tummy, in our legs, in our groins, in different parts of our uh, tummy. But they are lymph glands that are around the gullet, which are like little lumps around the gullet. They can catch cancer as well. And CT scan or other more, many of these tests are used to see how far the tumor is gone. Also, as you know, some of the cancers can spread to our lungs, to our liver and other parts of our body like, this, like the bones. And again, these scans are meant to look at the spread of the cancer. So that shows how early, how advanced the cancer is. Now, the second way of, of staging the cancer to see how early or advanced it is, especially to look at the size of the tumor and also the lymph glands around the gullet, whether they're involved with cancer or not, is a, a very special sort of a scan called endoscopic ultrasound. Now, ultrasound, we uh, most of us know, that's a jelly scan that is done to look at the size of the babies and pregnant ladies, and also to look at gallstones, etc. I'm sure you would have heard about ultrasound scan. What does endoscopic means? Endoscopic means with a camera. So what some doctors do in many centers to stage the cancer, you put the camera down through the gullet, through the mouth, the camera comes down and endoscope or uh, um, the camera. And inside the camera, there's a scanner. And the scan scans our gullet from inside where the tumor is inside. They can see the tumor. So they put the camera through the tumor and they scan everything around the gullet. So they can see how big the tumor is over here. They can also see the lymph glands around. So there's a very special way of scanning. The third is a PET scan. It's called positron emission tomography. It's a special type of scan. Also look at different parts of the body to make sure the cancer has not spread anywhere else in the body, like the lungs, the liver, the bones, etc. And the last but not the least is laparoscopy, which is I'm going to talk about again in the future, is basically a keyhole put through the belly button or around the belly button in our tummy to look at the lining of the tummy. Because one of the places... Uh, uh, cancer or the esophagus likes to spread to is the lining of the tummy and the liver and this test will show whether it has spread to those places or not. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is the treatment of esophageal cancer or cancer of the food pipe. Now I'm not going to go into very depth and detail about the treatment because treatment again like staging of the cancer it depends on which part of the world we are living in, what facilities are available, how much funding is there available, and how cancer is treated in different parts of the world. However, um, there are three main ways of treating the cancer. Please do remember that it, the treatment depends on not just the type of cancer, but also depends on the stage of the cancer. So how early, how advanced the cancer is. And is the intention because the cancer is early to cure the patient or if the cancer is too far gone then to make the patient's life a bit easier and make their pain easier, make the swallowing easier. So treatment is um, main treatment for cure or even controlling symptoms is chemotherapy, radiotherapy and surgery. Yeah. Now surgery comes in most patients when cure is possible. So surgery, there are big operations, there are life-threatening operations and complications, as you know, can happen after any, op any operation. However, these are very big operations because esophagus is in the chest and to get to the esophagus in the chest, a surgeon has to go through the tummy, through the chest, sometimes through the neck as well. So they are not small operations. So these are basically left in most patients who have a chance of cure. So with a combination of chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Radiotherapy we know is uh, treatment by X-ray treatment. So kill the cells with um, putting X-ray on it. X-ray um, are radiation, which are like light rays, which kill living cells. Now, when X-ray is given to uh, shine on human body, it will kill our cells. Whether they are good cells or bad cells, it doesn't matter, it will kill the cells. So the way X-ray is given to cancer patients is with very special uh, instruments. They can focus the X-ray onto a certain spot where the cancer is. So the damage is not too much. Damage is only to the cancer 
or maybe a little bit around it but not too much so damage is mostly to the cancer and chemotherapy or medication which are usually given by injections sometimes some of them can also be given by tablets and these drugs also kill cancer cells surgery obviously is to remove the cancer altogether um now in some patients when cure is not possible then the main important thing is to improve their swallowing because the cancer grows bigger and bigger and the food pipe gets tighter and tighter and the patient cannot swallow and finds it very difficult to swallow and as you can imagine how distressing it could be to somebody when they can't even swallow the saliva and the saliva does not go down comes to the back of the throat and chokes somebody especially when they are lying down water can't go down food can't go down they lose weight a lot so in that case the camera people or sometimes also the x-ray people can put a little plastic or a metal tube so if this is the gullet they put the tube inside it with the camera so there is a hole inside the tube and the food or water or whatever liquids we want to give to the patient will go down a bit easier so these are the main forms of treatment that are given i hope this uh, video was um, give you a bit more information and i hope to see you soon this was my last video on diseases of the esophagus now from next video onwards we are going to talk about diseases of that affect our stomach thank you for watching